Hey guys, I have a friend who plays Warcraft with me. I'm playing orcs, he's playing humans. We started getting into competitive Warcraft. He doesn't mean esports, he means melee, not CGs. We started getting into competitive Warcraft recently, and even though we understand the basic concepts and we know basic build orders, we're always struggling to do anything. The enemy units always seem to be doing more damage. Any tips that I can get on the matter? We are watching the replays and stuff, but we can't seem to pinpoint the problem. Could someone perhaps go against us and point out the issues? I believe we have fatal errors in our gameplay that leads to losing every time, even when we are in the lead. Thanks up front. I really appreciate you, even if you took the time to just read the message. There are types of basics that we know. We're struggling more in certain situations. For example, when playing against Death Knight and Lich, and they go Crypt Fiends, I, for example, only know a Raider Spirit Walker build, so that's what I mostly use. Sometimes I will go Grants with Shamans and Witch Doctors when I'm facing units that are not suitable to go with Raiders up against. But the most painful has to be when I follow the build order into Tier 2, and the enemy has more Tier 1 units than I do, so he always wins, because he comes early into my base, and there's nothing I can do to defend it with just three grunts, while he's got six or seven ghouls, or six or seven footmen. So he actually shared a one-on-one -on -one replay, I thought it was going to be two-on-two. -two. We see that Demon MKD2 starts immediately with his uh, altar, uh, four peons in gold. And then he even puts the gold peon on uh, a burrow, which means his hero won't be late. Although it was two seconds too early, so you lose a little bit of gold. The next goes into gold, this is also correct. The next makes a barracks, which is correct, but it is an awkward positioning. There's a one slot cubby hole here that can trap grunts if you rally wrongly. You gotta be careful of that. It's better to avoid cubby holes on forest when you wall off your buildings. You are playing against an undead player. I didn't see if it was random or undead, but I'm gonna assume you knew that. You're mining from a tree that is not the closest to your great hall, so you have a little bit of macro inefficiency. This tree and this tree are your primary opening trees. It seems you've actually rally pointed on this tree, so you're continually spending a few seconds more than you need to be to get your lumber. Your shop timing, let's talk about that. You've built your shop 30 seconds after your hero finishes. A shop takes five seconds longer than a hero. So 30 seconds after your hero's out, your shop finishes. I just wanna go ahead and preface and say that the only way that this shop timing makes sense is if you're back at home in 30 seconds. If you're gonna be back at home in 60 seconds, you might as well have built it 30 seconds later. Why would that be good? You'll have mined for 30 seconds longer and you will reach the amount of lumber required to go to tier two more quickly. So you must do the turtle camp or you will be back home late. You are doing this, so this makes sense. It's still a little early, but it's not really a big deal. There's a small secondary advantage that it is less cancelable by enemy pressure plays. All right. You can pull back your blades before the camp finishes so that you can start healing. You always want to make sure before you do anything else that you start moving your hero, your army. You always need to be in motion. You're actually spending time to scout what he's doing, but you're slowing yourself down. Crucial seconds. This could be easily avoided. You could have taken your army and actually moved back to base with an attack command, forcing your hero to finish all the creeps. And once those are all dead, you immediately go back. It's preparation often, not APM, that allows you to be quicker with things on the map. Your tech timing is pretty good, and if you build a burrow now, that's on point as well. You also sold TP and got double heals of speed scroll, which is good. You should really remember that every second counts. It is difficult to be imbued with the importance of these kind of uh, timings, but just think about it, if your second grunt is late and you queue up your third, your third grunt is also late. And if you queue up a fourth, that one is also late. So a 10 second delay is actually a 30 second delay if you have three consecutive grunts. So these early game mistakes really start 
mounting up and they make you creep slower they make you fight slower fight worse lose more because you had less and so on and so forth so be very very clean especially with the early build orders before you have a lot of distractions on the map you can really tell that you rally pointed on this tree and your peons We're are pretty crazily attack. ignoring the close trees if you see this make We're adjustments complete. you also have a very odd base layout this makes it difficult for you to build tier 2 buildings behind your base where they are the safest. This is not a 4x4 for a, for a building. This is a 4x3, so it doesn't fit here. It doesn't fit here because of altar. It doesn't fit here because of shop. It doesn't fit here because of burrow. It fits here, but you're going to block your worker peons. And now it also doesn't fit here. Which, And now it doesn't fit here too. So all your tier 2 buildings are going to be in front. Just remember that that is a liability when someone applies pressure to you early. I'm finding a ki all kinds of small mistakes with your play that do not define your loss, but they just make it more likely. You widen yourself up, you open yourself up to uh, more different mistakes. Okay, that was cool. You got the fiend, now you go back. You are over wind walking, you weren't surrounded yet. It's very tempting to hit that wind walk button over and over and over, but you're now out of mana and that reduces your options greatly. If you get surrounded, you're in trouble. You can't uh, harass us effectively anymore. You did queue up four consecutive grunts, and your tech is about to finish. You look at it now and then. You got the fiend. Overall, not too bad, I must say. You also forced some towers, or maybe that's what this guy always does. Moving on to tier two. You're starting your shadow immediately when you have money for it, which is great. Good macro so far. Um, but because you made that fourth grunt, that's actually untraditional to spend that much resources early. You have been delaying your tier 2 tech. And maybe you think it's good to make a lot of tier 1 early. But you can still make it after starting your tier 2 building. And that would be better. Perhaps it would be worth for you to spend a bit of time imagining what would be the theoretical best counter against what he's doing. Sometimes us not knowing what we should make makes whatever we do make come out slower. This is not something you need to figure out in a game usually. You can have a little notepad that says, if Crypt Lord, then. If Death Knight, then. If Fiend, then. If Ghoul, then. Make all your responses predetermined and pick the one based on the triggers that you see from your scouting. Now is not the time to get creative and adaptive and be like, well, I could never have known he would go for a hero that he has access to. So let's say that your bestiary is at least one and a half minute late, which means whenever your raider comes out on the map, you could have had it 90 seconds earlier. Right, that means fewer TP forces, fewer hero kills, and so on and so forth. But overall, again, pretty good with your uh, aggression. He doesn't have a lot of units after all, so you do get to push your weight around. But your shadow came out and didn't buy shop items. Big mistake. Make a habit of always putting Altar on top of your Voodoo Lounge and don't bring it into your army until you get those items. That's a very, very, very important part. You're now gonna actually be bleeding half to death. This is actually too strong of a camp for you at the moment. Uh, it's possible, but it's extremely risky. Hex also takes less long on creeps above level uh, five. So altogether, it's not super efficient. You did get the turtle seven, but here's the thing. Even though you stole his plant turtle, his knowledge of your being low allows him to take the same thing that you stole from him originally. He could go for a turtle because he knows you're not in fighting shape. And if you're actually mentally unable to let go of the fact that he wants to fight over the remainder of the camp, you could lose even more. These grunts all need double heal solve because you took so much damage because you took a camp that was out of your reach. That's 200 gold worth of healing and 90 seconds long healing. And you were so busy with this camp that you completely dropped your macro. Now, let's talk a little bit about strategy. You're making attack upgrades and armor before you know his units. If he's going mass Boneyard Frostworm, you don't actually want attack upgrade. So let's talk about versatility. Armor upgrade is more versatile than melee for Orc because you don't know his units yet. If you have money to sink in, perfect, get armor upgrade, but don't get attack. Another thing, what is the most versatile unit for Orc? Well, it's Raider, Headhunter, and Kodo. They are by far the three most versatile units for Orc. You can almost never go wrong making a Raider, a Headhunter, or a Kodo. 
unlike Grunt, Tauren, Walker, Shaman, Doctor, Batrider, and Catapult. Those are not versatile, those are counter units. So anytime you have gold left and you're not sure what to make, start making a few headhunters. Mix them into your army. Can't go wrong. Okay, armor upgrade, Research some headhunters. All right, now your priority should be to get your blade master level three so that you can wind walk into his base and see what he has. You separated your blade to scout what's going on and to see if you're getting creep jacked. Overall, your basics are pretty good in terms of game understanding. You're just not very aware of which uh, units you need to make when you're not sure what he's going for yet. And you're a little slow moving around the map and so on, but nothing unusually slow. This is just the level that you're playing at and that's fine. But that's an area that you can improve at. Make sure to pick that up with blade, not with shadow. And you do. Okay. Do remember to pick up those healing cells with your shadow. Now uh, you finish some upgrades. Really, the main issue that I see right now is that you lack decisiveness for how you want to win the game. You do stuff, you make things. It's like passing the ball to your friend on a football slash soccer field and then he passes it back and it was great passes it was accurate Research and so on complete. but you never actually have any purpose to go for the goal you never have the intent to finish the game you didn't even know you should shoot the ball at the goal uh, you just ran a circle around an enemy defender you stole the ball from them but you're still not sure what to do with it so you're just kind of going around in circles passing the ball Ready stealing it Research and reconquering complete. it and so on you should have a goal also. Do you go for an expansion? Do you go for a kill in open battle? Or do you go for an all-in on their main base? Those are the only three decisions you need to make. If you want to fight in open battle, you must find him somewhere on the map and then fight him while you're in good fighting shape. If you want to all-in him, usually that's with level three heroes. You reach a breaking point of your abilities. You just got your second level ability, whatever those are, heal wave, critical, you go kill them in their base. Why is that reliable? Because they will always come to defend their base. They do have defender's advantage, but you have the advantage of choosing when to fight. Right, so either you need to find him and fight him in the open. You don't need to find him and fight him in his base. You'll find him like that because he has to defend. Or you expand. Those are your options. And you're not doing any of them. You got 800 gold, 50 food. Then you're like, oh, well, I got 800 gold. I'll make a burrow and I'll go tier three. But it, you're not doing that because you wanted to. You're doing it because you got money left. That's like buying a car because you got money left, but you don't have a driver's license. Make sure that the plan, the steps that you plan out are serving a purpose. One of those three purposes. So what we now know is that he's actually going for frost worms. That's very fitting. A little bit of regret on that attack upgrade. And you're level We're two. Complete. So you're actually trying to find him using 50 food worth of scouting unit. Scouting should be done by one, two or three food, not 50 food. So every second you waste not finding him is really not serving any purpose. You also bought a TP, which means you're not all in. You're thinking you'll attack, you'll see what happens and then you're gonna go home and react. You also got second attack upgrade, even though he's going frostworm. So this is incorrect. So a goal of a TP attack is to buy time for a cool tech that you're getting while denying an opponent uh, their tech. But you have two attack upgrade but no pillage, so it makes a TP attack a little bit less good. You're also not getting any cool tech behind this. I, I would support what you're doing if you made a second bestiary and say, well, I'm gonna kill Crypt so that he can't make fiends and then I'm gonna go double bestiary wyverns. That's a cool TP attack. You are spirit linked on everything. Some people don't link themselves on everything when they attack, and that's quite bad. Heal wave is only level one, so you don't have that crucial breaking point. And you're not dispelling beetles with your disenchant walkers. Still, you killed the DK. I must say that he did die with double heal pot, so that wasn't really your earning, that was his fail. You killed a worm, and you consumed the mana pot, and you heal waving your unit. Now this guy is really something. He actually... Oh my god, you need to get out. No, you're... Okay, you're you're hexing so much and you're fighting in towers. You're not healing that much. But you TP out, you save everything, that's cool. Now, you've seen worms. What do you do? You should go for... Straight over 50 with a tiny great hole. Double heal solve, sell the cloak. Double heal solve, heal everything. Double clarity. Ethereal your walkers. Heal wave those. Heal solve the rest. 
pump over 50 headhunter and a kodo and then get a tiny great hole and expand what you do is you get a burrow you wait a long long time before healing that means if he attacks you now you're you're dead i don't know what you're actually doing this needs to go chop 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 buddy where are you buying the heal solves? You also put a move command on your shadow, which makes you block yourself as you try to get back to the shop. Just use F2, man. Clarity, clarity, clarity. You need to start clarity ASAP. Heal solves and speed scroll. <laughs> okay, cool. Now, what did you not do? Sell uses cloak, get lightning orb. You know he has air. You didn't get clarity. You still don't have a plan to expand. And you're still not going over 50. That means if he attacks you with worms, you can actually lose. You have information about his deck, but you're not countering it. Research but that's okay, you already said complete. that you were not familiar with unit countering. But I'll tell you, the best counter against worms is berserkers and headhunters. Now you're attacking again without being any stronger than the first time you attacked. That's not how TP attacks should work. You should attack, get info, and then counter. You see this? This is not a good fight. You're also forgetting to link this time. You also didn't use your Windwalk level 2 to scout before you run headfirst into trouble. You have a full mana Blade Master. You completely shut down on your uh, on the on a really good lead that you have built up, and you're still over hexing. There's no point hexing a Crypt Lord when you could save the mana for Heal Wave. And because you didn't take any clarity potions, you don't even have any Heal Wave. You're attacking a spiked Carapace. Uh, Crypt Lord with your blade. And you're getting owned by worms. Even if you kill the Crypt Lord, and you shouldn't, because he has heal pot that he could give, the worms will slaughter you for the rest. You should drink heal pot. Drink heal pot. Drink it. Or did he already use one? Uh, you're gonna end up winning this game. He's probably gonna rage because it feels bad for him, but you're you didn't produce any units. You opted for fight him out on the map, my option number two that I gave, but he didn't need to give it to you. Oh, nice. Uh, faith in humanity upgraded. Yeah, you opted to fight him out in the open with an army that technically couldn't win that fight. You only won because of the lead you have built up. But uh, yeah, I hope that was useful for you. GG.